Hey everybody, today we're going to set up some CVs and some locomotives, try and get them speed matched and to get a little bit better low speed performance. If you've seen any of my previous videos on operations or the rail fanning videos, you know that I enjoy running DPUs on the layout. I've been getting a few comments and questions as to how I reliably do that and not uh, have derailments continuously. So, short answer, you got to speed match your locomotives. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the CVs that I set to get reliable slow speed operation, uh, limit the top end speed of the locomotives, and I'll show you how I speed match everything as well. There's all kinds of computer add-on software-y modular stuff that you can get to program CVs, and I'm here to tell you, you don't need that stuff. This is super simple. It's super easy to do. You're going to go after four CVs. Now... Uh, the caveat here is that I'm using almost all Cato locomotives. I'm using standard Digitrex DN163 series decoders and a Digitrex system. So some of the CV values might be different that you're going to change uh, dependent on the manufacturer of the decoder. So just make sure that you are changing the effect that you want and not going specifically off the CV number I'm giving you. I will include a chart. Uh, part way through the video here we'll go off that chart and that's going to give you some values uh, that I use specifically to get the locomotives to run at specific speeds. Now that's 40 miles an hour top speed, 20 miles an hour at about half throttle. Uh, so if you want more speed obviously you just change those numbers but it's going to give you a starting point here. Anyway, four CVs, that's all you need to change. Uh, CV2, your start voltage. CV5, your top end voltage. CV6, your midpoint voltage. CV57, the most important one to change, is your BEMF strength. We're going to turn that right up. So BEMF, in essence, is cruise control, and it was designed to address weak motors or poor quality motors. Nowadays, everyone's using pretty good quality motors. BEMF is almost a redundant feature. It has its place, but uh, I find the performance is way better if I just eliminate it completely. So... That's the most important one that we can change. We'll get to the chart. I'll show you how things all line up. Uh, like I said, four for speed. I'm going to show you four for lighting effects at the end if you're interested. And uh, we're going to pick two locomotives and get them speed matched up here. So there we go. These are our two contestants. I've got an ES44AC on the right and an older run SD70M on the left. They both run at slightly different speeds, so that's uh, going to be a good thing so I can show you how to manipulate specific CVs to get them matched up. Okay, so if you're unfamiliar with how this works, I don't use, as I said, any of the computer stuff, so I just use my throttle. So when on your programming check, you're going to just hit program, it's going to come up PG, which is page programming, okay? Now, if you've attempted this before, this is well covered in the manuals, so uh, on programming track, you're using page programming. You're going to dial through all your different CVs on the left, and the value is on the right. So use your right throttle to change value. Okay, I'm typing them in here uh, with the keypad. So 05 to 120, and then you just hit enter, and that's going to set that up. So then we've got CV06, and you know you type in a value for that. You'd hit enter. Boom, you're off to the races. So this is how you initially set up your programming. 57 is BEMF, we turn that off, is a zero. Boom, that's all there is to it. And then when you wanna get a little further into this, these are your lighting ones, we'll just run through these real quick. But after you're done with your initial programming, if you've got Dakota Pro and all that kind of stuff, obviously you're gonna use that to set up your initial programming. Um, but like I said, I'm showing you how I do it and I would keep it as simple as possible. These are just lighting effects, and when I show you the chart, you're gonna know what those do, or I'll tell you what they do at the end for the lighting effects. Okay, so uh, to speed match, I've got two locomotives, 5530 and 4694, okay? What I will do is I will be sure that they're MU'd together. So if you look there, we're on ops mode programming, and 4694 is showing up. That's the locomotive that's gonna take the programming in ops mode, okay? So if we're going to change that, you're going to tap the throttle. Now we've got 5530. If you look here in Ops Mode Programming, 5530 is the locomotive that's going to take the programming. Okay, So that's basically how you speed match. The locomotive on the right-hand throttle is the lead locomotive in consist. So that's the one we're going to get set to the speed, and we're going to use it as our benchmark. And then 4694 on the left throttle, 
we're going to try and match that up as best we can. Okay, so here's our CVs. CV2, as I said, is your start voltage. I set it at 20. CV5, I usually start anywhere between 100 and 120. And you just get a feel for this when you've done it enough. As I said, I've been using Digitrex for 25 years, so I've got a pretty good feel for how these things all uh, affect the speed of locomotive. CV6, midpoint, anywhere between 60 and 80. CV57, crank it right off. And we can go over lighting effects real quick. CV33 is going to be a uh, value of 1, 34 value of 1. CV35 value of 2, CV49 is 104. And what that does is it takes away directional lighting and gives you real 17 dimming. Like I said, I'll show you that at the end of the video here. So we've got both of our locomotives MU'd and on the track, and we're just going to run up. We've programmed them both to the same value, and we're going to see how they play with one another. So as you can see, they're starting off relatively good, but 5530 is a little bit faster. So we're going to dial 4694 into ops mode and we're going to go after the midpoint voltage here, give it a little bump up. So if we had it set at 60, I might give it 10 extra, set it at 70, and see if we're a little bit closer. So that's been done, and if you look, midpoint speed here, we're pretty much bang on. Uh, one thing that can happen with this is, depending on the direction of the locomotive, it can be faster or slower. It's not a big deal. Uh, as long as you're within 10%, you just want to try to get it to match in kind of both directions. So if you're over on one direction and under on the other, take the best of both worlds your love and life. We'll switch directions, run back up through the throttle, see what it's like in this direction for the midpoint voltage, and now we can go after CV5, set our top end speed. The locomotive on the right is brand new. The locomotive on the left is a used one I picked up years ago, and it's been sitting in a drawer forever. So it's... Um, it's, it's by no means uh, fresh out of the box. So I've just bumped up, now I'm doing top speed, so CV5, and it was set at 100. You notice that there was a jump in speed. I set it for 120 to see if I could get it closer to 55.30. So now I'm going to just reverse direction. Normally I would just do this on the fly down the layout because I wouldn't be filming it, but for filming purposes, obviously, i got to keep going back and forth through the screen. So we're coming back the opposite direction. We're checking out top speed, and as you can see, pretty close. We're not doing too bad here, and uh, what we'll do now is get them a little closer and see if, run through the range on the throttle and see if we're good. See, we're a little bit off, but not by much, so just some fine tweaking, maybe take five points off that top end speed of 46.94, and then we'll be bang on. So one of the things I will do at the end is I will couple them together and see how they work. So let's see what our performance is like now. We should have good low speed performance, and they shouldn't be fighting with each other. When you eliminate the BEMF, they will not take off right away. You'll notice that with a fresh decoder, they sometimes jerk at throttle setting one. We're probably at throttle setting 10 or 15 here to get them to come down to this speed. So you're using way more throttle. I use all 128 clicks on the throttle to get up to my 40 miles an hour. So you see they're playing nice together. Slow speed performance, way better. So I'm pretty happy with that. You plug those numbers into your units, and you're going to get this kind of uh, this kind of result. So obviously, if you want faster, CV5, bump it up to say 150 to 180, and you'll be closer to 60 miles an hour. Just play with it, see what you come up with. It's that simple. So if you're still with me, let's go over lighting effects really quickly. We're rolling up here, and we're going to dim our headlights. That's going to be function four. Now we're still set up with function zero as our headlights. Function one is going to become our tail lights. So we got everything cranked off here. Now everything is non-directional. Regardless of direction of travel, the lights are going to be on if the function is active. We're going to turn the headlights back on, and because we still have function four active, we're dimmed. We're going to roll forward and we'll go to full bright. So just kind of a neat effect when you're making a meet. Dim your headlights, roll past, crank them back up to full. Now eventually I will go in and put separate uh, SMDs for the ditch lights so I can control those on a separate function. It's just not something I've gotten around to doing. It's been on my list for years and years and years. Still haven't got around to it. Will eventually. So we'll roll through here. This train's set up with the DPU in the middle and DPU on the tail end. And as per uh, operating rules, we want a light facing backwards on the back end of the train. So the DPU is facing forward, thus the tail light has to be on. So we activated F1. And there we have tail light on the DPU. So I hope you guys found this relatively simple and easy to follow along. Four CVs for speeds, four CVs for rudimentary lighting effects, and you're off to the races. Anyway, that's her for this one.
I have another ops video in the works that's going to be more uh, road switcher type of thing, so we're going to be dealing with some car cards. should be kind of fun. Uh, everyone stay safe, take care. We will see you soon in the next video. Thanks for watching.